Good morning. Welcome to Goose Prairie Forge. Let me show you around the shop a little bit. So this is a traditional blacksmith shop. I try to recreate the time period of about 1885 to 1910. Uh, you noticed me working at the forge. This is a, a solid fuel forge burning coal at this point. This would have been very typical, early 1900s. Air is blown into the fire by the hand-powered blower. Uh, again, this blower very typical of the early 1900s. There's a gear case such that for every revolution I make with the handle, the fan on the inside of this fan case makes about 50 revolutions. So I get a tremendous volume of air moving up through my fire. And the more air I blow through that fire, the hotter it gets. And it can get very, very hot. Hot enough to melt iron and steel. Some of the other tools that we use routinely, of course, would be the anvil. It's basically the blacksmith's workbench where we do hot shaping of the iron with our hammer. This one is a 210 pound Swedish anvil. From the records that I have, it would have been manufactured in about 1918 and was shipped to this country. I also use a smaller anvil. Uh, this one is uh, probably about 80 pounds. It's much finer, has a much thinner heel, much more delicate uh, horn or cone on the end. And, of course, this is just used for smaller items and for finishing work. Uh, another tool that I use tremendously is the cone here for shaping rings and making bends. So I need to show you this. I put that ring on. So this is a, a very valuable tool that I, I use a great deal. Um, another tool that's used tremendously is the swage block, of which I, I have several, but it uh, has different depressions for shaping uh, different articles, also holes going all the way through that we can use uh, for punching holes. If we're working on, um, let's say, an axe or a hammer. Everything in the blacksmith shop is heavy. It probably weighs about 120 pounds as well. So, some of the things that I've been working on recently, I tend to be a tool maker and my work is strongly influenced by the history of the uh, Dark Ages Scandinavians, uh, the Viking period. So I have most recently been working on some small little blades, uh, such as these. And I tend to concentrate on things, items, that would have been used by the everyday person. Uh, on your farm or on your small fishing boat um, during this period of history. 
so those are a couple of blades that are nearly complete. I have one here in the process. The blade has been forged. And now I'm just starting to rough out the handle, uh, the piece of wood that will become the handle. This is a piece of ash. It should be a, a beautiful handle. It should finish up very nicely when it's complete. And this will be attached with cutler's resin, which is a, a traditional material, a mixture of beeswax and tar, actually. And it holds the blades very, very securely. Other simple tools, uh, the awl, the awls for punching holes in leather if you're doing stitching. I've been making a number of these over the course of this winter. Extremely, extremely sharp. And also, again, uh, getting back to into the Viking age, I make a lot of reproductions. And this is actually a reproduction of an eel spear for spearing eels in shallow water. Uh, eels were a, a significant uh, food source during that period of history. So we have uh, iron tines attached to an ash staff and wrapped with linen thread through this area that is uh, coated with a mixture, again, of beeswax and tar. Beeswax and tar, very, very useful articles during the Viking Age. So again, uh, my work tends to be fairly utilitarian. <clears throat> um, the things that would actually be, be used. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed this brief little tour of our shop this morning, and hopefully you can join us again another time.